to there. Okay. Let's put this right here. Um, if there's no questions from homework, I am concerned, but I'll move on. There should be. Yes? The last one. Do you remember? It's going to be uh, number 77. 77. Oh, yeah. That one's so cool. Right. Um, so it says prove that this function is next to the 50. Right. Prove that it has, it doesn't have a local max. Or a local min, right? Who would like it? So, so prove doesn't have local anything. The way you do a problem like this, is there a procedure to find local maximum? So then you apply it. You start. You just do the procedure, and you know something weird is going to happen, right? So what's the procedure to find local max, local min? Take a derivative. Zero. Yeah, it's zero are undefined, but this is obviously polynomial. So you take a derivative. I'm not going to do it, um, and then you try to set it equal to zero. Um, something strange. What? In fact, you kind of know, so it, will it be undefined anywhere? No, it's a polynomial. In order for there to be no local extrema, it won't be able to equal zero. Okay, so you already know what is going to happen. You just have to be able to show that. But at least that, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, proof questions are always the most daunting, right? But when it's prove this doesn't do this, and this, the this, has an established procedure. You're like, all right, we just go into it blind. We just apply the procedure, and something is going to contradict itself, or something's going to, yeah. I like it. Does that help? Is that okay? All right. So at least you know what to look for. What kind of um, what kind of polynomial is never equal to zero? What's the simplest example? of a polynomial that is never equal to zero. What's the simplest polynomial? X plus one. Sure, I love it, a line, right? But that, a line is, is gonna have uh, x-intercept unless it's just a constant, right? So it's just one. Yeah, so one wouldn't have an x-intercept, right? Uh, but that's not a great function, that's too simple of a function. What is another way that a polynomial could have no x-intercept? Oh, x squared plus like five? Yeah, x squared plus five. Right? So if this was the derivative, in fact, let me see. Let me do one little thing. Let's make it three x squared plus five. Does that really change anything? Let me ask you this real quick. So if that was the derivative of a function, and this can't equal zero, correct? Then the original function can't have a local max or a min. Can anyone tell me if this is f prime? Can somebody tell me what f would have been? Six x. Six x. No, no. Six. No. Stop saying six. X cubed. Hey, there you go. So what? The three go back up. You got to think backwards oh, now, don't you? I mean, yeah. Do you see that? X cubed plus five x plus something. This might be leading up to something. Later in this chapter, and maybe the whole next chapter. Maybe not. So x cubed plus 5x. 5x. And the weird thing is, it could have been plus any constant, right? Because the derivative of any constant would have been 0. Yes? And if you plot this, it's going to be something like, uh, I don't freaking know. What, what's the intercepts? Uh, who gives you? Let's make this up. Let's make that that. Uh, x, x squared plus 5. It's just got an intercept here. And it would be something like this, where there is no max or min. Does that make 
sense? Now, what does this have to do with this problem? Uh, I, I just want you to see how a function could lead to a derivative that has no x-intercept. Yours is going to be funkier, but uh, that's, all, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Okay. Um, so that's a good question because it's a weird problem. I love it. Anything else? There are weird problems in the homework. One reason I say that is just so you know, if you're like, that's weird, but you're like, oh, it's just me. No, it's just weird. So that's why one reason I'm here is to answer those freaky ass questions, right? Okay. Y'all question down? Okay. Yeah, good. 63? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, 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 right. See, these are the questions. If, if nobody asks me about these questions, I'm thinking to myself, are they just like leaving it blank? Or have they not started the homework yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, 63, they give me that A and B are positive. Find the max value of uh, what was it? This, this, right? Yeah. On zero to one, right? Now this is almost exactly the same as what we just did. Is there a procedure for finding? And I they don't say. They don't say absolute, but they, they, they mean absolute. I'll tell you this, that's what they mean. Because they give us an interval, so normally that means absolute, but I just want to put it Is there a procedure for finding the absolute maximum of any function? Apply the procedure, right? It will be, again, it will be weird, especially the factoring part. So let's do this. Um, What's the procedure, by the way, to find the absolute max value? What's the absolute extreme? What's the procedure? The first step, of course. Derivative. Derivative. That's a really good. If you're not sure, that's probably the first step. Right. Um, why do you take the derivative? So you can find the, the critical. critical numbers. Because where could the absolute max occur? At the critical numbers or the range. at the end ones? I like it. Right? Take a derivative. Now, is this going to be weird taking a derivative setting equal to zero? Hell yes, right? But, oh, um, all right. So if you haven't tried that one out, at least now you kind of have a plan of attack. Now, now one thing that's going to help you out a lot, believe it or not, uh, note, how do you factor this here? How do you factor that? Yeah, what, what pieces? Don't you have so many x's and so many x minus 1's in each term, right? How many terms are there? Two. two. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> right? Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So there's one, two terms. How many x's can you take out of both? This guy can give three. But can you take three x's out of both? No. So of course, what's the general idea then? When you look at each piece of each term, you take out the one that has the smaller power, correct? Somehow that's going to relate to, well, you have to do this on the next step. Does that mean you can take out x squared times x minus one and four? Yes. So let's see what's left. I had three x's, took two, so I got one. I had four of these, I took four of them, so I got none of them left, plus. I had two x's, took them both. I had five of these, took four, so I got that. So this is x squared, x minus one to the fourth, two x minus one. So if that was a derivative, I could set that equal to zero. I see my three critical numbers, right? You can see that? What I always get is somebody stops here and they say the critical numbers are zero and one, but then you're missing this one. Oh shit. Can't tell the critical numbers until it's fully factored. And what here tells me it's not fully factored? Because there's this still. 
No. If I say factor 12 and you tell me 7 plus 5, is that good? Factor 12 and somebody says 7 plus 5, is that good? No, because what does factor imply the operation needs to be? Multiplication. And what's the operation here? So how do I know this is factor? What's the only, uh, what's the only operation? Okay, then I know it's factor. Yes, yes, okay. So what I need you to realize is, now this is going to sound stupid, but variables are numbers. So they have to act the same way. So if I have 7 plus 5, that's not factored. So I have something plus something, that's not factored, right? I need number times number times number. Ah, now it's factored, okay. It's really easy to forget that variables are just numbers. So everything numbers do, variables do. Yes? It really sounds simple, but we forget that all the time. Okay. Um, cool, I like that. Any other? Okay. Two really good questions. Those are the two, like, I'm like, if nobody asked me, I'm, I'm concerned. Okay. One little, let me do one more step on this just to help you with that problem. What if I add this, x to the w? Okay. Oh, shit. Don't make them stuff. How many x's can I take out? What is it always? always the smallest one, right? Because this guy can give W, can this guy give W? No. If I try to take W away from this guy, is he gonna freak out? Because he's got less than WX's, doesn't he? Do you guys see that? So if I take this many X's out, how many X minus ones? Two. Two. This guy had WX's. Then I take all of them away. I took all but two. Yes? Yes? Okay. And then, of course, I took both of these. Plus, I took all of these, and I left one of these. Do you see, do you see that? Again, W is just a freaking number. How do I factor shit with exponents? I take the smallest one out. And whoever had the smallest one. The other one is going to have whatever's left over, however many I didn't take out. That's what he's got left. Yes? Okay, okay. This gets really weird when you're doing these kind of problems, but they're based on really simple ideas. Yes? Wait, where do you have the x squared from? Okay, okay. Wait, wait. wait. All right. Did I take wx's out? Did I take wx's out? Like I took two of these out, yes? Yeah, you okay. took the smallest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I take all WX's out? No. No, how uh, below W? How many? Two. So that's why there's two left. Oh, so you split that two in there? Because if you bring it back in, don't you add the powers? What's W minus two plus two? The full W, oh. right? So if you got $10 and I take uh, two less than 10 from you, Eight. You have two left, don't you? Because I, if I take two less than 10 away from you, I took eight. So don't you have two left? So however many you had, if I take two less than that away, you got that two left. Okay, maybe. Now, now, do you understand? That, it, it, don't take this wrong. That is simple. But it is not something we do all the time. It's not a way that we think all the time. So I don't want you to feel bad if I'm saying it's simple and it's like, it's simple to you, whatever. It is simple, but it's just we don't think like that all the time. So it's fine if you don't immediately see that, but realize it's exactly what we always do. So what did I do here? Didn't I take one less than this guy had? Doesn't that mean there's one left? It's the same stupid thing, yes? OK, maybe. Maybe. So that also relates to that problem with the A's and the B's, right? Some, something like that's going to happen to you. Okay. Okay. 
So, um, I think, okay, I've got, like I promised, I've got a handout. I want to do a quick little review. We basically just did the review. So, critical numbers for a function, what's the steps to find them? Yeah, one, find f prime. Two, get all x's that make f prime either equal to zero or undefined. Yeah. Equal zero or f prime undefined. Right. And that's how you get your list of critical. Now how do you now the book on page two ninety four they got this big ass chart thing. And if you like that way, you could do it that way. Some pre-calculus teachers kind of did this kind of stuff. I really desperately, okay, let's do an example problem. And then I'll unleash you on this worksheet. Because uh, then if I wanted to find uh, the local maxes and mins, I would do this and put my critical numbers down and then see where it's positive and negative because then I can see where it's increasing, decreasing. Does that make sense? If the slope is positive, that means my function is? If my slope is positive somewhere, that means the function is going up, yes? And if it's negative, that means it's going down. It's crazy. All right, all right. So if it goes up and then it comes down, then that thing in the middle must have been the max, right? And that's why Putting little pluses and minuses is all I need to figure out where the maxes and mins are. That's almost too nice to believe. All right. So let's try a problem. Uh, okay. Uh, let's make it nice and nice and nice. Nice and nice and nice. Is that too close to where I am? No. Good. All right. Take a minute to figure out what f prime is. Does chain rule come into play here? Mm -hmm. Not really, because inside is the slopes of one. Yeah. Now, the chain rule always applies. Remember that? Chain rule is always there. It's just when the inside is linear slope one in X, it's going to be times one, so who gives a shit? Right? If I would have put like 2X plus 2, then it went, oh, shit. And the derivative of the inside would have been more than just one. Yes? Okay, so let's see. Right, the derivative of this, what's that? Derivative of this. And then the derivative of the inside is one. And then leave this guy alone. Plus, leave this guy alone. And what's the derivative of this? And the derivative of the inside is 1. So the times 1 occurs. But doesn't that look a lot like the factory problem I had us do earlier? Right? Okay. So what can come out of these? I got a little 4 kind of buried in there, but that's all right. right. No number can come out, yes? How many x minus 1s can come out? 2. And how many x plus 2s? 3. 3. Let's see, what are we left with? Three, I took both of these, and I got one of these left, yes? 
Then I take three of them and I add four of them. So in this first term, I have three times x plus two, which is three x plus six, is that? So I have a three left. I took these out and I have one of these left. So three times x plus two is three x plus six. And what's left over there? Four. Yeah, there's a four and there's an x minus one because I took all three of these out. So four x minus four. And now, if you simplify that inside, what do you get? So what are my critical numbers? where I wish your pre-cal teachers would have emphasized this more if they didn't, or, or I wish you would remember <laughs> if they did. Um, so let me show you. This is so beautiful. I really desperately want you to do the least work you need to. So let's put this in the right order, negative two, negative two sevens, and one. And it's zero at all those places, yes? So here's the beautiful thing. Where, where, where is zero in there? It's in here, right? So if I plug a zero in, what is the sign of the result? If I plug a zero in here, it's squared, so that's positive, yes? Zero in here, that's, two, that's positive, yes? Zero in here, that's just positive, yes? So it's positive. You know, watch, this is the beauty of multiplicity. I don't need to plug any other shit in because I know the multiplicities. What's the multiplicity of the, where I got one from? Where did I get one from? Him, right? Isn't it even? What does a parabola do? Doesn't it turn? So it's, if it's positive on one side, it's positive on the other side. Bam! Where did the negative two sevens come from? Seven. This one. And it's got a odd. Well, what does a line do? Doesn't it go through? So if it's positive on one side, it changes sides on the other side. And then where did negative two come from? And then two come from that. Is it odd multiplicity? Cubic goes through, it doesn't turn, so it has to change signs. So can you, underneath this, do a rough sketch of what this looks like? Do it. Sell some room, right? So what's it doing back here? It's going up. It's going up, and then it's flat here, right? And then after that, it's going down. down, and then it flattens out again, and then it's going up, and then it flattens out, but then it keeps going up. I really want this to make sense. Doesn't it look parabolic here? Well, no, this is, well, I mean, I'm not too much here. Yeah, okay. That's right. um, the important part now is this would be the location of a what? A local max. Yeah, that would be a max. So where the max would be a negative two comma, and then I just plug a negative two into the original, and I get zero done. Right? You guys see that? And this would be local min, and I plug a negative two sevens in and get whatever the shit, I don't know. <laughs> whatever the hell that would be, I don't know. Blah. Okay, so, so again, if 
you want to know what the function is doing, if it's increasing or decreasing, you have to use f prime. You have to use the derivative. But if I want to know where the function is, you've got to use f. And that's why I keep telling you guys, really tell yourself what the shit each thing is, right? So you know where to plug stuff. Because we're about to introduce the second derivative and talk about what it means. So now you're going to have three things. You've got to make sure you plug it in the right place at the right time. Okay. Can anybody tell me the intervals where this is decreasing? Negative 2. Negative 2 sevenths. Yeah, negative 2 to negative 2 sevenths. And you always use parentheses on the ends because what is it doing right at negative 2? Is it increasing or decreasing? It's flat, so of course you're not going to include that. And then of course it's increasing negative infinity, negative two, negative two times one, and then one to infinity. Right now it's really simple to read those all. Okay, so let me give you this worksheet. Our answers. We don't need to do this part. Should we just? I don't know. Maybe I should. Yeah. 
you guys, how do you feel about that? I mean, that's, to me, it's kind of nice. If the pluses and minuses, they tell you kind of like how the shape goes. Does the graph actually look exactly like that? No. In fact, let's look at what the graph looks like. If I'm you, even if the problem doesn't say I can, I'm freaking graphing a lot of this shit. Now, the thing you've got to be careful about is the next step after this is going to be you're going to do a lot of work, and then you're going to graph by hand the function. And what I love is if you just copy it from the calculator, I know you did. I know you did. It's going to look too perfect. So what do you do? You graph it, and then you check it. Right? So I basically, this is not really a good graph, but anyway, for right now, let's just see what the graph looks like. And it's kind of extreme, but it does have goes up, over, up, down, over. So we basically got the shape, but we just didn't know how high and low it was. Right? Uh, let me come back. So up, over, up, down, up, down. So it's got the same shape. We just didn't know how deep the valleys were, how tall the the, the hills were. In fact, I kind of do know, don't I? <laughs> Stupid thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So where is it increasing? What interval? So when you're trying to find the multiplicity, you plug it into the derivative, and then when you're trying to find the mins and maxes, you plug it into the original equation, right? Is yes, the, this sign diagram mm -hmm. right here is a picture of the slope, right? So it tells me where the slope is positive, it tells me where the slope is negative, all that kind of stuff. So when you try to create this sign diagram, you have to use f prime. Yeah. And then when you found like the minimum is three comma zero, you plug it into the original equation. Yes. Okay. If you want to know where the function is, you have to use the original equation. Yeah, 
So the derivative of x, that's nice. Leave this guy alone. Plus, leave x alone. What's the derivative of this going to be? What's the derivative of e to something? E to that thing. Times? Natural log. No. Times of derivative of that log. Yeah, derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of negative 2x squared? Negative 4. Negative 4x, I like it. The natural log thing is generally true, but natural log of e is just one, so it doesn't show up for you. Now watch this, it's kind of nice. Uh, oh, I love, oh, there it is. Can't I take this out? So what would be left here? One. Minus, if I take this out, there will be a minus four x Square, which is exactly what I was supposed to get. Now, in terms of critical numbers, what piece of this function doesn't give me any critical number? Because critical numbers occur where the function is zero or undefined, and what piece of that can't be either of those things? E to the something. E to the something is always positive. Got that asymptote of zero. So don't even look at that part. It's not going to give me shit. How do I get from 1 minus 4x squared? What critical numbers do I get? You see this in yet? Add the 4x squared over. You set it equal to zero. Divide by 4, you get x squared is 1 fourth. Take the square root, you get. No, or you can write it down. Right? Um, so if you do 1 minus 4x squared equals 0, square root plus or minus, right? So you get x plus or minus 1 half. So, to find the critical numbers for anything, take the derivative, and then you think, is it possible for this to be undefined? And that would be like if there was a x plus 1 on the bottom. So x equals negative 1 would be a critical number, but it would be where the, the, the derivative is undefined. Or where it's equal to 0. So you just set it equal to 0 and solve. No big deal. All right. Now we make a sign diagram like we always do. to solve it, but wouldn't it be 1 minus 2x, 1 plus 2x? Wouldn't they both be first powers? So that's odd multiplicity. Now, now listen, listen, guys. If you really don't like multiplicity, what can you do to not use multiplicity? Can't I just plug in, I plug a 0 in to investigate this area, can't I just plug a 1 in? Totally, of course, you don't have to use multiplicity. I'm trying to it's a good idea to use it. It's a, it's a good thing to know. But if you're like, ah, I hate multiple. Okay, plug like a one. So me, that's going to be negative because they're both odd multiplicities. So see what we have. We plug a one in. What do we get? Well, that's always positive. One minus four is negative. Negative. Okay. No big deal. So again, if you don't like multiplicity, you don't have to use it. I'm not going to take points on. And of course, back here. You'll also get a negative. If you plug in negative 1, you get a negative. So what's it look like? It's going to be decreasing, and then it's flat, and then it's increasing, and then it's flat, and then it's decreasing. Is this, is, 
guys, how are you doing? It's a very prescriptive recipe here, right? All that can really change is the function, and, and like you might have some trouble with some factoring stuff, or just, you know, the freakier the function is, the more little details you might have to be careful about. But that, the, the overall idea is it, it never changes. It's crazy. So I got a local min. At negative one half, I don't give a shit. I mean, just, is that, is that cool? You understand what I'm saying? Just plug negative one half in. Where am I going to plug it, though? The original. You're like, I'll tell you where to plug it. Yeah, you plug it into the original, and you get some freaky number, right? That's your min. And the same thing for your max. One half, comma, freaky ass number. That part I don't care about, because you can plug it in the damn calculator and let it do all the work. Who cares? And then, if you wanted to, then you would you would graph it and just see, did I get the shape right? And by the way, real quick, because it was bugging me so bad. Um, have you got this here that you want here? I, I had typed into the freaking Desmos. I typed in 2x minus 3. So the whole thing was looking shitty. Uh, so this is better because it was supposed to have at one, it was supposed to be stupid big, remember? And it just wasn't doing that. So here, one goes way the shit up there. Anyway, so it's got this little thing. It's got a mound that comes down and goes back up. So we've got the shape. It's just crazy tall, right? So it just, it just like elongated like crazy. So if you're going to do that, you make sure you plug it in correctly. It sucks. Okay. Now, with a little bit of time i got left, I want to talk about the second derivative so, and what does it tell us? So the first derivative, of course, tells us what? Graphically. What does the first derivative tell us about a function graphically? Slope. Slope, sure. Now B. Critical numbers. Uh, we can use it to find critical numbers, but the derivative doesn't tell me that. The rate of change. Rate of change, I like it. So if it's positive, then it's going up, and if it's negative, it's going down. Okay, that's, that's the level I want. So visually, the slope tells me where it's increasing, decreasing, which leads me to maxes and mins, critical numbers. You guys with me? So now I want to say just as simply, what the hell does the second derivative tell me? Now, now come back. I like the rate of change thing, right? So the first derivative tells me the rate of change of what? Don't just say rate of change. Rate of change of what? Say again. Yes, I love it. Kick ass. Um, so anytime I take a derivative of anything, it tells me the rate of change of that thing. Yes? Period. So if I take the derivative of a derivative, yes? So the first derivative, so I have a function. F prime tells me where it's increasing, decreasing, right? So F double prime would tell me how much the increase or decrease is itself changing. So what the shit? All right, so if I tell you, let me see if you guys can draw you're ready. I want you to draw something. I want you to draw a situation. If I said the rate of increase is decreasing, so the function is going up, but the amount it's going up is decreasing. So think about if you're in a car and you push all the way down to the gas. You're gonna in your, your rate of increase is increasing, but if I let go of the gas, aren't you still going forward? Yeah. But are you going forward at a faster rate or a slower rate? The amount that you're going, you're going slower, aren't you? So okay. Versus rate of increase is decreasing. By the way, you hear this in the news. You would hear stuff like the rate of inflation. The uh, rate of how inflation is increasing is, is starting to decrease. 
So they talk second derivatives in the news all the damn time. People just don't realize that's what they're saying. So both of these are going to be going up, but it can't be a straight line, correct? No. So let's say, let me just give myself some points. So it's going to go up, but the rate of increase is decreasing. Can anyone tell me, can you do it in the air or something? Yes, yes, yes. So it's still, it's going up all the way through this. Move over. It's always increasing, but the amount that it's increasing is itself decreasing. So what's the slope here? It's big positive. But the slope itself is decreasing as I move. Does that, do you see that? Slope itself is decreasing. So why is the first derivative of this picture positive from A to B? Because it's still increasing. It's increased. The function itself is increasing. Why is the second derivative negative? Because the slope, remember, so the, the derivative of the function tells me what the function is doing. The function is increasing. Second derivative tells me what the slope is doing as I move. And what's the slope doing as I move? The slope is getting smaller, so therefore it's negative. Set. So every level of derivative is talking about the derivative before it. We are going to do this, though. Well, let's do the next picture, and then I'm going to talk to you more about what does this say about this, right? That's what we really want to know. Right now I'm talking about what's this say about this. Stay with me, stay with me. So what would be different about this picture then? It still has to be increasing, right? But now the rate of increase. Oh, did I say decreasing again? Good job, John. You're all like. I already drew it. I'm sorry, guys. What's going on? <laughs> You're all like, it's, uh, it's the same picture. So if the rate of increase is increasing now, what's different? Yeah. So it's, still, it's going up, but it's got to be, as it moves, it has to be going up quicker. So which picture would we want to be true if we're talking about inflation? This one. Because then we're hoping what happens after this. We're hoping it does that, and it doesn't do one of these, <laughs> right? But this one, if this was inflation, <laughs> right? Because this pretty much tells me, oh, okay. Isn't that the case with Zimbabwe? Isn't that the case with Zimbabwe where like they're? Oh, Zimbabwe. Oh, god, yeah. Well, yeah, quite a few. Uh, history teacher has a one billion dollar bill for that. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Which probably means nothing. Yeah, he can get it for a hamburger. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's a little insane. So. Uh, the U.S., even though we're all like, ah, we, we're nowhere near as bad as some other countries, which is kind of amazing. Anyway, let's not make this into a world government class. Okay. Um, now, real quick. Just looking at the pictures, just looking at these um, shapes we made, what is different between those two shapes we made? They make this a little more... I mean, I don't know how you, <laughs> what you guys think. Right. One curve, one curve. Sing it, sing it. One curve. Ah, curve. I love it. The curvature is different. In fact, you guys remember like concave versus convex oh, lenses yeah, yeah. and stuff? We're not going to suddenly start doing, unfortunately, I would love to do some lens trip. That'd be cool. But let me actually say this. Uh, isn't this sort of like, if I kind of continue this, would they make like a cup down? Yes? And if I continue this back here, wouldn't they make a cup up? So the word for this is concavity, which, you know, like concave, convex lens. So the word for this is concavity. So the sec the first derivative tells me about slow rates of change. Second derivative tells me about the concavity, the curvature of the function. And what's really interesting is 
Um, if my second derivative is like is positive but small, that would be sort of like um, this. If my second derivative is positive but big, like maybe this is two and maybe this is five hundred, that would be like boom. You know? So it, it's how tight is the curve? You can think about being in a car, right? Do you want to be going around a curve that's like nice and smooth, or you want to be going around like that, right? I don't know. It depends on how you drive and what you like to do. But personally, I'd rather have a smoother curve. Right? A maybe. Maybe. So let me show you this first thing I had up here. Here's a function. Can you see just from this function where it is cupped down, where the second derivative would be negative? Is that kind of like, can you see that? Where, where is it cup down? Where is it concave down? Yeah, like in here, right? And where's it come up? Zero, zero, one. Okay. So this would be negative concavity. This would be positive concavity. Isn't there somewhere where it changes from one to the other one? Can somebody, anybody willing to stand up and go point to where they think that is? Can you guys, I want you to really understand. Is it definitely cup up here? Totally. It's definitely cup down. Somewhere there's where it changes. Does anyone feel like brave to point to where you think it's changing? Yes, come on. All right. You don't have to be perfect. And then if somebody else that disagrees. Yeah, okay, okay. Good. I like it. So he's got like right here. Yeah. And that's probably roughly where everybody else would think, right? Okay. So somewhere in here, what's the scale here? Uh, or yes. 0.25, right? So you're thinking about uh, the, that's one half. One half. Okay. That's right. This is one. This is one half. So this is roughly like yeah, that is roughly 0.25. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, I like it. Okay, what we're about to do is to figure out what that is. Now, now let me ask you, what is the second derivative going to be for anything in here? What's true about the second derivative for anything in here? Any of these? going to be negative, negative. 11, because the, the rate of increase of the slope is actually, it, it's decreasing, right? Um, and any number in here, it's going to be, so what should it be right about where Ricardo pointed to? Zero. Should be zero, I love it, okay, so, everybody see that function is that first one, x cubed, blah, 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 let's write that down, I know i got to turn my camera around, I'll do that. I'm all excited, sorry, I'll, I'll try to call it. This is really cool shit. All right, so let's write this like f of x. What was it? Square minus six. All right, so take the first derivative. What do you get? Three x. Say it, sorry? Wait, yeah, 3x squared. All right, 3x squared? Plus 2x plus 2. Okay. Take the second derivative. 6x squared. Here. Wait, 6x plus 2. I like it. And what do we just say? If I want to find exactly where that position is, what do I do with that second derivative? What do we just say? Find Back three. here it was negative. Over here it's positive. So to find exactly where it switches, is that it equal to zero, right? So it's sort of like finding the critical numbers. So the second derivative has critical numbers also. And that's the possible locations of that freaky ass point where the concavity changes. Okay, so what would the critical number be here? Negative one third. Negative one third, right? Negative point three three three, which is really cool. It's pretty good for humans, right? Yeah. Now let's see real quick. Uh, how would I verify 
that it is concave down back there, I could make a side diagram, right? If I make a side diagram, Jeff, you can do it there. You can if I plug in uh, negative one, what sign is this? If I just pick in a number back here, negative one. This. I can even plug in negative a billion. Right? Doesn't matter. Just anything over there. It's negative. And if I plug in one, it's positive. positive. Now watch. This is where you got to be careful. That sine diagram I just made is for the second derivative, and second derivative tells me concavity. So what can I draw under this sine diagram? This. And does that match the shape? Shit, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So, what we call this point, negative one third comma, whatever. <laughs> what we call that point, we call it the inflection point. They sometimes say inflection point when they're talking about unemployment or whatever. I don't know if you guys have heard this. Anybody ever heard that term, inflection point? Maybe? Sounds like a really boring movie. Anyway, sorry. Um, there's something else I want to say. Oh, and just like with first derivative, does every critical number match up with a max or min for the first derivative? Does it have to be a max or min if I find critical numbers? Do they have to be maxes or mins? When I find the critical numbers, does every critical number mean it's a max or a min there? No. no. I love it. So could it be possible that I find this number and it's not actually an inflection point, meaning the concavity stays the same? Of course. So that was negative, and that was negative. That would not be an inflection point because the concavity did not change. So, um, I mean, what about this? Right. What's the first derivative? What's the second derivative? What's the critical number for the second derivative? Zero. Zero. Plug a negative one in, you get positive, right? Plug a one in, you get positive. Because what does the x to the fourth look like? Doesn't it just look like a more steep? Parabola. So officially, that is the location of a critical number, but it's definitely, doesn't it stay concave up the whole way through? Concave up the whole way through? But officially, at zero, it's more flat. It's not really, cur it's, it's, it's not really flat, but it's, in terms of concavity, it has zero concavity at zero, which is you know, a little strange. I don't know, have you guys ever, have you guys ever uh, done like x to the 100 power? Graph it, let's see. And then that'll be it. Uh, see what Devlin thinks about x to the 100. No, Jeff. All right, look at that. Would you just stare upon that majesty? Right? It looks like a snake pool. Look at that shit, huh? It looks like a snake pool. <laughs> <laughs> Holy what? Now if I zoom in, you will see very slight curvature. I mean that just looks, did you expect that? To look as I zoom in, do you start to see the curvature? Yeah. If I keep zooming in, you'll see, you see how you see more curvature now? It just gets, I mean, what is 0.1 to the 100th power? Holy shit. What is 0.9 to the 100th power? Stupid small, right? So it's like hugging that freaking thing. And the curvature is just tiny, tiny, tiny. Right, it looks almost linear. Sorry, sorry. So, I think that's enough. So next time we'll finally learn Locatal's rule, which quite a few of you have been trying to use too early. And it's not everybody's fault, because the tutor might have told you to do that, but we'll finally learn it for real next time. Okay.